Okay, so today I want to talk about the best policy in life. That's right, dishonesty. Dishonesty is the best policy. And I think I'm going to go back to dishonesty, to be honest with you. <laughs> to be honest with you, I think I'm going to be going back to a bit more dishonesty. Now to be clear, now to be clear, not dishonesty in the way that you may initially think of dishonesty. You think of dishonesty as lies. Lies. Is e lie gonna lie? No, I'm not gonna lie in the traditional sense of the word, but I'm probably going to lie in the more the more realistic concept of the word lying. So I learned a lesson a long time ago, a long time ago in a place called West Virginia when I was a kid. My, ta my father taught me a very important lesson. And it was a very important lesson. It was a very good lesson. And he was absolutely 100% correct factually. But I think it took it a little bit too much to heart. <laughs> it's one of those lessons in life where, uh, where parents teach you something and it's like, that's a great lesson. But, you know, use it. <laughs> Use it sparingly. So I had, um, I got in a bad report card. I got a bad report card. <laughs> so my little brain, I was thinking about, I was like, well, I'm going to get punished if I show this bad report card to my father. So I'm just going to lose the bad report card. <laughs> right? And so basically, I just lost the bad report card. I don't have a report card because I didn't have a report card. And so once my father figured out what was going on <laughs> after a couple of weeks, uh, basically I got punished. And uh, supposedly, supposedly why I got punished is basically because although I did not technically lie, I did not know where my report card was. <laughs> and the point of the matter was, the point of the matter was basically I was keeping information from him that he needed to know. And although in a way I wasn't being dishonest, right? I wasn't lying, but I was being dishonest because I didn't know where my report card was. But I didn't know how bad I had done on my report card. And so basically by by trying to, 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 to muddy the water, uh, at the end of the day, I was being dishonest, even if I wasn't technically lying. And again, I think this is an important thing to be thinking about, especially in the modern world of communication, especially when you deal with people, right? A lie, a lie is when you say something that is incorrect. Dishonesty is, well, if the person doesn't know to ask and you don't provide the information, you didn't lie. You didn't lie, you just weren't dishonest, or you, were, you weren't honest. Um, I think about this when I had my um, uh, employees. One of the quotes I had for my employees was, a professional answers the questions the clients do not know to ask. So when you go and you're going to be installing a server system, obviously you're being called in for a reason, right? Your client doesn't know what Ethernet is. Your client doesn't know what Cat5 cable is. Your, cat, your client doesn't know the difference between a switch and a router and a modem and an AdTran, right? So when you go in and you're selling them products, how, how a lot of people are dishonest is, again, they don't lie. <laughs> we are selling you a server and we're selling you an AdTran and we're selling you these things. But they're dishonest because those things don't necessarily work well together. I sold you exactly what I told you I was going to sell you. Yeah, but... <laughs> <clears throat> you know what the client was looking for? The client, the client did not want to buy a server. The client did not want to buy a switch. The client didn't want to buy... The client wanted a solution. So if you know the client is trying to create a solution from the products that you're selling them, it is your job as a professional to explain to them what they are buying and why this probably isn't going to work right. Again, it's sitting there about having a conversation with your clients, having a conversation with your customer. Oh, you're going to be buying a server. Why are you going to be buying a server? Oh, that's why you're going to be buying a server. Okay, what do you expect the load on that server to be? Oh, that's that's the number of users, so on and so forth. Well, I tell you what, I could sell you this twenty thousand dollar, you know, quad Xeon Core two hundred and fifty six, you know, gigs RAM server thing, or I could sell you this little atom box that'll do everything that you need, right? So, uh, so basically, there's a difference between lies and dishonesty. So, Two different worlds, right? And so anyways, I, I took this lesson to heart. Again, I'm a little aspie. I'm a little aspie. It's not that honesty is the best policy. It's not that I can't lie. 
It, just, it takes too much brain power. It takes too much brain power. You have to understand, like in an aspie mind and a slightly autistic mind, dealing with humans <laughs> takes a tremendous amount of brain power. <laughs> I would rather be figuring out squid configurations um, than dealing with humans most of the time. Like, even a simple, simple, simple conversation with a human being takes so many of my resources. Just, oh, again, even I will go with friends, I will go with family, I'll be around my wife. And like, my wife knows. Like, I will be around people that I enjoy, and then I need to just go in my hole for about a day <laughs> so that my brain can cool down, right? And so one of the big things, like with honesty and lies and all of that, is, is you think about how much effort it takes just to interact with human beings. Generally, just talking about what the hell the weather is. And then you start, then you start adding subterfuge onto that. Then you start adding lies onto that. Then you start adding dishonesty onto it. And honestly, for me, it's one of those cost-benefit analysis things. Again, this, this, a lot of stuff, can I be honest? Can I, can I be honest with you? A lot of this stuff really isn't moral or ethical. Like, it sounds like I'm moral. Wow, Eli's moral. Eli doesn't like to lie, and he, he likes to be honest. He's so moral and ethical. That, that's incorrect. <laughs> If I allowed you to think that, that would be dishonest. No, it's, it's, it's not really that immoral or ethical. It's when I look at the cost-benefit analysis, the amount of energy it takes um, uh, for subterfuge and all that is just way too much. Way too much. <laughs> I, can, I can redesign the project, build the customer exactly what they want, and get my paycheck and the time and the, with the, the amount of brain power it would take me to, to lie or be dishonest to a customer, right, client, right? So anyway, so I took my, uh, oh, I took my father's father's advice, and uh, again, as an Aspie, it's just too much uh, brain power to, to lie and be dishonest. And then one of the things that I found for myself is, again, in my late twenties, my mid to late twenties, is when a lot of things started falling started falling into place, right? Because one of the big problems for me is I don't understand the problems people have with the world. Now to be clear, I get that they have problems. If you have problems with existence, I'm not saying that you're wrong for that. But existence really has never been one of my problems. Um, like I'm fine with saying that I'm here. People are like, you know, what? Like the whole question, like why am I here? Right? That's very profound to a lot of people. To me, it's like, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Again, too much brain power. Why? Like, literally, from an existential sense, why am I here? I just don't really care. Like, there's a lot of this stuff with uh, I find with most people. Um, you know, why you're here and what you're doing and what it's all about. Again, the whole question, like, what it's all about. That seems like a rather absurd question. Like, why does there have to be a reason? What? I and mean, like, why? Like. <laughs> You assume, you assume that there are reasons, and therefore you struggle because you don't know the reason that you assume to be there. What if we just whiteboard that? What if we just, what if we just erased the concept that there is a reason? Right. But anyways, there's a lot of this stuff, right? For me, and so like for me, like for you know, up until like 25 or 26, I had a big problem because I go around and I look at the world, um, and. It didn't really seem to be that bad, to be honest. I mean, there's pro. Don't get me wrong. There's there's problems, but almost all the problems are solvable. So many, like not, if I was gonna spitball it, I would say ninety five percent of humanity's greatest problems are rather easy to solve. To be honest with you, again, you look at like uh, you know healthcare in the United States. Here's the thing: if people ate better, <laughs> they got more exercise. We could probably bankrupt. <laughs> Our, our, our health system. I mean, you know how screwed up that is? You know how screwed up that is? If, if everybody in the United States, again, without thyroid problems, I'm not talking about the people that actually have thyroid problems, but everybody in the United States basically kept their weight under 10 pounds, you know, within 10 pounds of what it should be. They went out and they did the equivalent. Basically, they, they got their heart beating for, for 20 minutes a day. If they w tried to reduce stress... Uh, if they try to reduce caffeine consumption and alcohol consumption, um, we could literally probably bankrupt the health services in the United States. 
I mean, really, I think, I honestly think it's that profound. I would honestly put $1,000 on the table that if some statistician actually put through all of the numbers on what if Americans actually treated themselves well, what that would do to the healthcare industry, I put $1,000 they would come out with it being bankrupted, right? But everybody has to come up with these things. Everybody has, again, you've got Atkins diets and paleo diets and South Beach diets and raw diet. You got all this stuff going on. You got all of these systems and these things that people can fail at, right? Again, if you say eat better and exercise more, you can't really fail at eat better and exercise more. And that's one of the lessons that I learned, right? That's, that's how you lose weight. Again, right now, Again, with stress, with my wife, and all kinds of other things, I gained weight, got up to 220. Um, I have now lost, or 223, like, I have now lost, I'm at like 190, I was at 194.9 yesterday. So in about a year, I've lost like 27 pounds. And, and do, do you know how I did it? You know, you know how I did it? I ate better, and I exercised more. I literally, I run two miles a day. I literally run only two miles a day. I run two miles a day, and I eat better. And so one of the things, right? So in my early 20s, I was wandering, wandering around and all these people were saying, I don't understand. Eli, you don't understand, right? And I'm an Aspie. <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice I don't understand. <laughs> you, you say I don't understand humanity and that's just like water is freaking wet. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't, I don't understand humanity, right? So I spent my early 20s. I got my college degree, I'm in the military, travel around the country, travel around the world. And there's all this like, oh, Eli, you don't understand why it's so hard. Eli, you don't understand why it's so hard. Eli, you don't understand, right? And then one of my travels, I went to Seattle. I met this guy called Adolfo. He taught me how to basically create a consulting company. Again, you know how do you create a consulting company? Uh, you figure out what service you have that other people are willing to spend money on, and then you hand out business cards. That's how you create a consulting company. <laughs> This is why I'm not really a good, like, self-help guru. <laughs> this is why I go bankrupt as a self-help guru. Because <laughs> like, Eli, how do I succeed? And we're like, well, find a service people want <laughs> um, that they're willing to pay for and out business cards. It's not that freaking complicated, right? Anyway, so basically going in my, my late twenties and then, you know, I created a, I created my business. I'm a business. I had my employees after the great recession happened. I started doing YouTube videos. And one of the interesting things for me is I was profoundly moved by the fact that life is actually rather simple, right? And it is. Uh, there's a difference between simple and difficult. The simple, uh, difficult, and hard, easy, easy, hard. So simple does not mean easy, and difficult does not necessarily mean hard. Basically, it's how, how complex things are, right? So, oh, I don't know. So, like, so writing code, right? If I'm going to create a computer program, um, but I am already an expert computer programmer, uh, this may be a complicated task, but it may also be easy for me right? I am already an expert in coding. And so I have to figure out how to get 20,000 lines of code to actually do something that anybody wants to care about. That, that's, that's, uh, that's complicated, uh, but it's rather easy. You know, you sit there with a cup of coffee, you take the next week getting all this code to work together. And what I found with life and what I found with success is most of the time life is simple, but it's hard. And I think that's where, like, a lot of people, they create these systems. Again, like, when you think about it, like, with losing weight, I've lost 27 pounds. Uh, the, 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 the system is simple. The system is simple. Eat better. Eat better. Exercise more. And to be clear, I still drink alcohol. I still drink beer. I had a six-pack of beer the other day. I still drink beer. I still eat out. I still... But in my mind, I'm thinking about it. I get on the scale every night. I understand where I'm at. So if I, you know, if I splurge one day before I splurge again, I make sure my weight is getting back on track the whole nine years. It's very simple, but it is hard. Like every day I have to go out and run. And right now, right now, I don't know when you're watching this. Right now it's like July or August in Maryland. Uh, so when I say I go out and run two miles a day, <laughs> I'm going out and running in a 101 degree heat index. Oh, it's simple. Oh, it's so simple. You put your earbuds in, you start running. 
until you get back to where you started. Simple, hard. Yeah, running two miles on a 101 heat index sucks, right? But that's, that's what I figured out is in my early 20s is so many people were talking about how they were, they were failing. Like they were failing because everything was so complex, right? Again, you think about the Atkins diet. You talk about ketosis, right? It was really interesting. I was uh, watching Tim Ferriss talk about ketosis. And so the idea of using ketosis to, to lose weight, uh, and he was saying it works, it works. But it's a very complicated system. Like to actually be in ketosis, you have to eat the specific foods. You have to get this little tester to make sure you're all, 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 always in ketosis. Like there's this whole thing that goes with it. And so a lot of people fail because when you got this really complex system that you have to be doing day in, day out, you're most likely going to fail, right? It's not simple. And so what I found is people are doing Atkins and people are doing this and people are doing that and people are doing the other thing. And again, by the time I got to my, my middle or late 20s, it was like, oh, no, people are doing it wrong. People are doing it wrong, right? Find the simple way to accomplish things. And it may be hard, but again, at least for me, what I find is simple but hard is a hell of a lot easier. Again, I get up there at 101 degrees heat index and I start moving in a direction and I don't stop till I get back to the beginning. Um, I think about that like when I got my college degree. Everybody's like, oh my God, getting a college degree is so hard. But one of the things I did, again, I, I went there and I took a look at it. It was hard, but it was simple. Like I realized that CLEP tests or these things called CLEP tests college level entry placement tests. Um, you can actually pass CLEP tests. And again, most high school students can pass most of the beginning CLEP tests and they give you three credit hours. If you go to a community college, they will give you three credit hours. It's like a 60 or $100 test for things like English and basic history and all that kind of stuff. And you can literally pass out of a class. So a normal college class is 40 hours, 40 hours in class. You can get out of that class by simply sitting down, taking the stupidest test you've ever taken in your life and grabbing three credit hours, right? I found again, like people talk about, it takes four years to get a degree. It's not four years to get a degree uh, here. It's 120 credit hours, right? So for me, I would take 18 credit hours per normal semester, 18 instead of 15. So most people take 15 credit hours per semester. I would take 18 credit hours per semester. And again, when you talk about cost, uh, when I went to my university, the cost for 12 hours was the same as the cost for 18, right? So basically, as cost went, I was able to drop the cost of my college degree because I was taking 18 credit hours per semester when some people were only taking 12. So I was literally, I was accomplishing a third more credit hours per semester than somebody else, which then dropped the cost by a third. I also found things like, and that's where I went through very quickly, and I did a winter mini master. So there's a winter semester type thing. Two weeks, you got a, you got a, a college class. Or during the summer, I was able to do 15 credit hours during the summer. And I was able to do all of these things. And then again, in order to save money, um, I went to a community college. So I found a community college where, the, where they had a transfer degree. So you go to a community college where a two-year degree, two-year degree, 60 credit hours at that time cost 4000 Now, it still only costs $6,000 for 60 credit hours. But the entire degree transfers. So all of my little CLEP things and all my little, like going and going, I, I got certified in scuba, so that was a credit hour. Like all of this weird credits that a university probably wouldn't want to touch. I went to a community college. I bundled all those dirty, nasty little credits together into a transferable degree. And then I took that to the university. I then took 18 credit hours at the university and was able to get my degree in two and a half years, right? That's the thing. It's, it's pretty, when you start thinking about it, at the end of the day, it's relatively simple. It's hard doing 18 credit hours a semester. Sucks. I was also working full time. <laughs> Sucks. But, right. And so anyway, so so by the time I get to my, my mid and late 20s and have, have my, my business and then I start doing YouTube videos, what I have realized about most people is real, the reason that most people fail, they don't really fail, to be clear, they give up. One of the reasons most people feel like they failed and therefore they end up giving up is because they are trying to do things that are so complex that basically they are built to 
fail. Um, they're not in the right position to do X, Y, or Z. And so that gets them into the problems that they get into. And so when I started communicating with people more and more, what I was trying to do is try to be more and more honest. Again, especially as people come to me and they start asking me for advice and they start asking me all of these questions, right? I could, I could not lie. I could not lie. I can answer, if you ask me about uh, coding boot camps, right? I can give you a lot of true advice about coding boot camps and be 100% dishonest because there's no way in hell you should go to a coding boot camp. Again, like when you look at things like coding boot camps, uh, there's very weird things that they do with the statistics. Like they'll say 96% um, of their attendees uh, get hired at a tech company. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Like again, if you actually know the, the the tech world and all that, and so you start looking at it, and what you find is the job at a tech company might literally might be secretary. Might be so you spend twenty thousand dollars on this boot camp, and you might be a secretary. You might be the. I mean. Again, how many people actually become high-level coders is a huge question mark. And so when people come to me, they'd ask me about boot camps. I'd, I'd explain all of this to them. Or when they would come and they would say, again, how do I become like a computer repair professional? And I would – like I can I – can, I can not lie. I can not lie. I can tell you to get your A+. If you want to swap hard drives, if you want to shove graphics cards into PCs – if the A plus is the way to you look, look, it's not a lie. It's not a lie. The A plus is the way to go, man. If you want to slam RAM sticks into sockets, man, A plus is A plus is gonna teach you that. But who the hell cares? Here's the thing. Uh, but it's dishonest. I can tell you to get an A plus to become a computer repair professional, and that's not a lie. But it's dishonest. Because anybody in the field knows somebody with an A plus is basically worthless. Again, when I had my business, that was now 11 years ago, 11 years ago, I would have people come A plus certified, asked to be free interns. All they needed was experience. And I said no, because them being free interns certified it was too, still too expensive. They still didn't know enough for me to care. Again, be A plus, all that stuff in A plus. That was the little crappy tasks that I did uh, in order to do the important stuff, right? You get your A plus certification, again, in the modern world, if you're making $12.50 an hour, I'd actually almost be surprised. I could pay A plus technicians 11 years ago during when the economy was still going good 11 years ago, twelve fifty an hour. <laughs> and I would add a lot of people applying, right? So, so again, I can tell you to become a computer repair professional to get the A+. Plus. That is not a lie, but it's dishonest because if you're really going to become a professional, you need to be thinking about, again, your retirement fund, your health insurance, if your girl gets pregnant, or if you get pregnant if you're a girl, all that kind of stuff, $12.50 an hour isn't going to do it for you. Again, if you, can, if you learn coding, I know more than enough people that have learned C Sharp or Python or Java or any of the number of programming languages, taking about the same amount of time it takes to get an A+, and they go off and they're making six figures. Uh, again, it was funny when uh, people would come to me talking about getting the A plus certification. And a few years ago, I literally knew one company, they were hiring PHP interns for $40,000 a year, and they didn't have to know PHP. This is how desperate people were for coders. Um, you didn't have to know, you just simply have to be motivated. You had to simply be motivated, and they had to feel in their hearts that you'd be able to figure out PHP. And they would pay you 40 grand a year. So, so imagine, I have these people coming to me like, I wanna be a tech professional, I'll get my A plus. I'm like, well, the, P the PHP intern that literally doesn't know anything is getting 40K a year. And if you get your A plus certification, you might, you might be making twelve fifty an hour, which is I don't know twenty five twenty five a year. So anyway, but one of the things that I found though is I started talking to people, is I started to get more and more and more and more and more and more pushback. Because what I've been finding, and it's whether people want to be computer repair professionals or whether or not they want to lose weight or get in shape or buy a house or anything, like all of this stuff can be broken down into rather simple 
procedures. This is how it works. You create a you create a one to five year plan based off of whatever your goals are, and you just you basically just work the plan. You know, every week or two you go back, you modify things a little bit, you just work the plan. But I found there were a couple of things, there was a couple of problems with this because I came at the problems from the Aspie mindset of solving the problem. Again, if I want to lose weight, if I want to lose weight, the point is to lose weight. I've been talking about this with my wife. So I want to get down to like 180, maybe 175. So for me, that's light. But again, I'm middle age, I'm middle 40, almost 44 at this point. And so if I'm going to be around another 44 years, hopefully, you know, I've got, I've got knees to worry about. I've got heart to worry about, right? I'm not, I'm not partying. I'm not, I'm not in Hickadoo partying until dawn anymore or Prague party until dawn anymore, right? There's no, there's no reason for me to treat my body like crap. There's no actual value. There's no, when you look at cost benefit analysis, for me, most of the time, day in, day out, treating my body like crap, there's no real value in it. Again, to be clear, when I was younger, when I was young, when you're backpacking through Europe, Oh, you're just pouring down the alcohol and eating all kinds of nasty stuff. And, you know, hey, it's worth it. Cost benefit of analysis, having fun in Europe for a few months, worse, worth the uh, however much you take off your liver. But now, again, like I say, for me, I start thinking about it. I was like, I want my knees. Again, what, what, what I see is really bad is with the old people and knees. It's like protect your knees at all costs. Again, for me as an Aspie, I sit there and I look at people and I see the people that are having good lives and see the people having bad lives. And the one, the one thing that I've seen with old people, it all comes down to your knees. <laughs> Maybe hips. Hips are actually repairable. I know a lot of people that have had hip replacement. Hip replacement, actually, that's like, that is actually a simple repair. Knees, on the other hand, knees are the thing that if you have a problem with your knees, they can try to fix it, but they may make it worse. So it all comes down to the knees. So for me, if I can take 40 or 50 pounds of body weight away, to, to keep my knees around, right? That's that's what my goal is for. And so for me, if you want to lose weight or whatever else, that's okay, this is how we do it. This is, again, eat better, exercise more. But one of the things that I'm finding, one of the things I'm finding is people don't actually want to solve the problems. People don't want to solve the problems. Um, I, I could spitball why it is. I don't really understand, to be honest with you. But talking with so many people, and again, I've talked with so many people at this point and all kinds of things. And what I find with most people is basically they want their own viewpoints reinforced. What they really want, they don't really want the house. They don't really want to lose weight. They don't really want to be tech professionals, successful tech professionals. They want their beliefs reinforced. That's what they actually want. They don't want the additional information. Eli, how do I become a computer repair professional? What I am finding is they want get an A-plus certification. <clears throat> they don't actually want to think through that an A-plus is going to get them 12 an hour. They don't want to think through that, hey, <laughs> you can still work with computers. You can still do technology. But if you actually do something people care about, they will pay you a hell of a lot more. They don't want to think about all that kind of stuff. They want their own biases and preconceptions reinforced. And what I find is when I try to explain to people these biases and preconceptions and how it's going to lead them down a bad path, they actually get very, very, very angry. And it's angry in weird ways. It's angry in weird ways. Like I remember talking to this one woman. And she had like a parent or whatever that was willing to pay for her to go to a coding boot camp. And so my advice to her, she had never done coding. She had never worked in technology. She had never done coding. And again, this is one of those harsh things because when we talk about social justice, she was a very nice black lady. <laughs> she was a very nice black lady who had never done anything in technology, had never done coding, didn't know what the hell an if else statement was. But her, her, her parents were willing to spend $20,000 a send her to a boot camp. I remember it was so funny how irritated she got at me because I sat there and she, cause, cause I was doing Skype meetings at the time. So she was doing the Skype meeting. I was like, well, look, you know, technology, technology encoding is its own world, right? There, there are certain mindsets are good for it and certain mindsets that aren't. I'm sitting here with you for half an hour. So I have no clue what your mindset is, 
But this is just a reality. Again, if you're if you were going to be a bricklayer, right? <laughs> It's, no, it's a no-brainer to say certain types of people are good at laying bricks and other people aren't. It's a no-brainer to say certain types of people are good at being farmers and other people are not. It's a no-brainer to say certain types of people are good to be pilots and other people are not. But somehow, somehow, when I have the audacity to say some people are good at doing technology or coding or anything like that and some people are not, people lose their minds. And so one of the interesting things that I saw, I was sitting there talking to her, it's like, well, look, they're going to be paid $20,000 out of their pocket, and you're willing to do this. What I, what I would say for you uh, is the first thing that you should do is you should go out, and there's a, there's a book series at that time, a few years ago, called Sam's in 24 Hours. So basically, they're just self-study books, right? Self-study books. Sam's is, was, very good series, right? So basically, it breaks down, you know, a coding language, Java, JavaScript, PHP, whatever else, into uh, hour-long lessons, and so basically I said, before you, sp before you spend $20,000 on a boot camp where you may not want to do the work at the end of the day, I would highly recommend you go out and you get that Sam's in 24 hours. You get through the entire Sam's in 24 hours. And if at the end of that Sam's in 24 hours, you're still motivated and excited and want to do the boot camp, then God bless, take the $20,000, write the check and go to the boot camp. She was not amused. <laughs> She was not amused by that advice. She was very, very frustrated. It was very like one of those weird things. You ever have that time when you're like looking at somebody and you're like, oh, I'm pissing you off. Wow, I'm pissing you off. And the reason was is because she had been told, she had been told, you go to a boot camp, you get a good job afterwards, blah, blah, blah. This wasn't reality. And what I'm finding as I'm going through, like I look at my, my content, I look at the content and I look at so many of the things that I do. And I think one of the things that's been very, very damaging for me as a content creator, so I've been doing content now for 10 and a half years. I think the things that have been really damaging to me as a content creator and dare I say influencer is I have been honest. I have been honest. Instead of simply not lying, right? Lying is a thing and dishonesty is a thing. If I had simply not lied, I would be doing much, 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 much better right now. Truly, truly, my ass be coming out. I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest with you. If I had simply, simply not lied and left it at that, I would be doing so much better right now. Like I think about that with, uh, like when I first did it, started doing my videos. So again, uh, 10 and a half years ago, almost 11 years ago, uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that was the time my wife ended up going through her cancers. So she had, she's had three cancers at this point. Uh, skin was the last one, skin. Melanoma, get your melanomas checked out. It was kind of funny. Um, she found out she had a melanoma and then she didn't really think anything about it. I mean, she was gonna go get it dealt with, but she was like, eh, skin cancer. And so we went to like a Christmas party, went to a Christmas party. She's like, yeah, it's no big deal. It's a melanoma. And then literally the person she was talking to was like, oh my God, my father died from a melanoma. It's like, oh, so if you have skin cancer, do take that one seriously. No cancer is a joke. Here's just one of those random pieces of life advice I will give you. <laughs> Never laugh about cancer. Because like, she had two cancers. This was literally her third cancer. She was like, woo! Ooh, it's the easy cancer. And then, then this person almost breaks down in tears because her father had died from it. You're like, oh, okay, never mind. All cancer is serious. But anyways, going back. So I, I shut down my business and started doing these videos and then started getting a little traction with it. And that's when she came down with thyroid cancer. And then after that, she came down with breast cancer. Well, the thing was, the thing was, that was, that was a time period where I was being much more dishonest. All right. So I was doing my good salesperson training, doing my good salesperson training. So if you go look at my videos, my educational videos from, again, 10 years ago. So anywhere between, let's say, 10 to 8 years ago, All right, You go to those videos and it's like, hello, hello again. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy. Today, we're going to be learning about. All right, so during these videos, I was always happy. I was always smiling because I could jump cut, right? They're all, and that would be the thing, like, you don't know how many days, you don't know how many days I was sitting there worried about my wife dying. I would go, like some of those, if you ever see the building where it has like an orange background, I would go to my old building. I had bought a fucking building for that business before it failed. I would go to this building. It would be cold. It would be cold. It would be rainy. 
I was worried about my wife living. Like, and then I go, I'd set up a camera. I drink some coffee. And this is how I was. This is truly how I was just like. But again, for me, I'm one of those people, I don't know. Like I'm not I'm not one of those people that, that turns into a ball. Like, turning into a ball and being depressed is just not how I do things. I'm just an active type of person. Like, when I'm happy, I do shit. And when I'm depressed, I do. I just need to do something, right? And so, so that would be the thing. Like, I would go, I remember sometimes it would just be this cold because you know winter time here it would just be this cold rain in this building and so the building that i owned um i didn't want to keep the hvac i was like i don't know three thousand plus square feet so i didn't want to keep the hvac on on a three three thousand square foot building that i basically wasn't in very often didn't want to pay the bg and e bills on that so most of the time like the utilities the you know the hvac system was generally off i might turn it on right beforehand or i might turn on a little space heater so it'll be cold and it'll be rainy and I'm being worn by a fucking space heater in this building that I had purchased not that long ago thinking I was going to take over the world. And I'm worried about my wife dying and everything that goes along with that because cancer is a whole. And, uh, and I just go, when I put up the camera, I used to have these little, uh, they're like outlines of a script, not a script, I've never been a script person, but I've had an outline of script. Clip up the outline of the script. Turn on the lights. Uh, oh, grab my my cooling cup of coffee. Uh, <clears throat> click. What the fuck am I doing? Come on, head in the game, head in the game, head in the game. All right. Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today is class, we're gonna be talking about hacking. There's a lot of people out there that think hacking is this really complex, sophisticated subject, but today we are going to delve in, I'm going to show you what hacking is really about. Fuck me. I wonder if she's gonna die. The fuck would I do if she died? What the fuck do I do with the dogs if she died? Fuck. Ah, man. Ah, now I, now I ready for this? Yeah, ready for this? No. Hell no, I'm not ready for this shit. Fuck me. Okay, okay. So as I was saying, hacking really isn't that complicated. Now, a lot of people think hacking is complicated, but it's only because they don't understand how easy it is to use the tools that are available for you, right? So that's the thing. When you're going out there and you're going to be hacking, you're not actually going to be creating code from scratch. You're not actually going to be building operating systems from scratch. Hacking is like everything else. There are a lot of off-the-shelf products uh, out there for you. They have Kali Linux, which is a full-fledged operating operating system that allows you to do hacking. There's something called Metasploit that allows you to actually script hacking attacks. There are many other products like that out there for you. And so we're going to dive in. I'm going to give you a bit more of an overview of these individual uh, products so that you get an idea of just how simple this really is. <sighs> That was my life. That was my life for a few years there. And the funny part is, the funny part is, right? I was being dishonest. I was, I was not lying. I was not lying. I was being completely dishonest, completely dishonest. But the weird part is, you know what the weird part is? You know how many comments I get from people nowadays talking about when I was happier, before I was burned out? You know how, not gonna start swearing. It's fail normal, fail normal, family friendly. Not gonna start swearing. But do you know how many insults I get from people 
that now I have become burned out. Now I've gone through my midlife crisis. Now. But the funny part is, I am actually in a much better uh, place in life now than I ever was back then. Not too worried about my wife dying. House is doing fine. Chihuahua's doing fine. I mean, we got the plague going on. Okay, let me be honest. Let me caveat that a little bit. We got a plague and a Great Depression coming. So, but, but from a psychological standpoint, to be clear, from a psychological standpoint, I am doing so much better right now than I ever was 10 years ago. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. Now I'm being honest. I'm still not lying. Again, I don't see the point in lying. Lying's, lying more or less isn't worth the time or energy. So I did not lie before, but I was being dishonest. Now I'm not lying, but I'm being, I'm being honest, right? When you sit there and you're doing coding projects, when you sit there and doing hacking, when you sit there, you can spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure out what problems are. Again, a lot of this is, you know, when you're when you're installing systems, it's running cable and it's figuring out what problems are and it's 24 hour days. Again, how many how many 30 day months did I work? How many 16 day 16 hour 30 day months did I work? And one of the things is over the years, I've tried to be more fully honest with people um, about that being the actual job. There is the task, showing somebody how to swap a hard drive is a task, but then there's the full job of how are you going to pay your rent and when are you going to be able to take vacations? Again, you, you think about being a tech professional. One of the reasons why I like not being in a server room anymore is I don't get a call at midnight. I mean, you got to think about that from a lifestyle standpoint, right? If you are going to be a support technician for an infrastructure, if something crashes at midnight, like happens a bit, happens a bit, you got to get called up. But as I've tried to talk and be honest with people about this, I've actually gotten more and more and more pushback. That's been very, very bad for my personal career to, uh, career uh, progression. Right, because that's not what people people want. They want the answers. They don't want to be lied to, but they also don't want honesty. So, anyways, those are some of the things that I'm pondering right now. So, as I'm sitting here and trying to figure out again, again, as I say, crisis. When I say conflict, yesterday conflict wasn't the right word. Crisis, crisis really leads to clarity. Again, as as we have the the plague going on. Again, whether whether or not you believe in the plague or don't believe in the plague, you can't you can't deny the ramifications. You can't deny that borders are closed. You can't deny that that many states are mostly shut down. You can't deny, you know, all these companies are laying off. And so for me, that's where I'm sitting back. And for a number of years, and it is weird to think about. You think about that and. Um, Thank You for Smoking. There's a movie called Thank You for Smoking. If you've never seen that movie, you have to see that movie. And he talks about, what is it, the the, um, the middle class Nuremberg defense. The, the middle class Nuremberg defense is I have to pay my mortgage. So all the evil that middle class people do, it's all to pay the mortgage, right? You know, the, the Nuremberg, the Nazis is all they were following orders. So all the evil and all the shenanigans that so many middle class people uh, do, it's, you know, about paying the mortgage. And so, you know, I think about that now and with crisis and with everything coming up, I really, I realize how much luxury I've had to be honest, right? Because that's the thing. I can be honest. I can have a completely clean heart. And if viewers come and viewers go, well, it doesn't really matter. Again, my, uh, I have a daily blog channel. I have a daily blog channel. I just keep losing subscribers on the Daily Blob channel. I go to the Daily Blob channel and I'd be honest. And again, what I'm honest about is, you know, I believe black people should matter. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I believe in so many of these things that you would think are common sense, social justice things. But how I present it, I present it honestly. I present it honestly, like uh, like with, with black folks. Right? Black lives should matter, absolutely 100%. But again, as somebody who left Baltimore City, I'm not, I'm not sure what happens when you defund the police in a city that has a murder rate where one African-American man is being killed every single day, right? I don't see how defunding the police and tearing down statues 
and all of these things are going to end up helping 65% of the population at the end of the day, right? When you have taxes that are through the roof, when you have services that are garbage already, right? When you have all of these problems, I'm not sure how, again, defunding the police and knocking over statues is is going to bring a tax base back. Again, me sitting out here, me sitting out here in the suburbs, when I look at when I look at what has been going on, what part of this is an argument for me to move back to Baltimore City? Oh dear, dear. You know, I didn't I didn't realize until they knocked over that statue of Christopher Columbus how much I really want to live in Baltimore City. Oh yeah. Hey, remember when our car got broken into literally so often we had to flip a coin on who was going to take the car to get it fixed? Yeah, well, they're going to be defunding police, <laughs> right? But that, again, that's one of the problems. Like with audit, so when I when I explain that, when I say, right, I lose people. People don't people don't like to hear that kind of crap. People don't like to hear that. But I've had I have had the luxury of honesty, right? If if money is fine, if money is fine enough, if I'm in a good enough position, right, I can be honest. And if people reject that honesty doesn't matter that much. What I'm looking now, real world, real world, when I'm looking at a plague, then I think this crap is going to be much worse than anybody is letting on. Again, we're not even talking into mutations of COVID. I haven't even wanted to go into that. I haven't even wanted to bring up that concept. I mean, they've already said that COVID has mutated at least once. <laughs> With everything going on right now, we're not even talking about what happens when COVID starts mutating. Anyways, but you got the COVID thing going on. You got the depression coming out. You got all these things coming on. And, and that's one of the things like I start looking at. And one of the questions that I have is, do I still have the luxury of honesty? If being honest turns off a massive amount of people that could one way or another be paying me money, Is honesty actually good policy? Again, not to lie, not to lie, not to lie. I'm not gonna lie. I just have no, I have no brain power. It's not morals, not ethics. Just don't have the brain power to lie. Don't have the brain power to lie. So I'm not gonna lie. But that's not the same as being honest. And that's what I'm thinking about now. So you'll notice I started doing, uh, I'm started doing uh, news videos, news videos on my main Eli the Computer Guy channel. So I'm the main Eli the Computer Guy channel. And again, I get no views. I get no views. I, I talk about I talk about Raspberry Pi. Again, if you want to be a tech for a professional, Raspberry Pi is awesome. Truly, truly, in the last year, the two uh, technology products I am most impressed with are my ten thousand dollar Mac Pro and my fifty five dollar Raspberry Pi. Just so you understand, like when I when I am impressed by a product, it's not about the price tag or anything else. I am just as impressed with that by that Raspberry Pi as I am with a Mac Pro. They just have very different use cases, <laughs> very different use cases, right? But the funny part is, again, like when I do video, like if you want to be a tech professional, I'm doing videos about Raspberry Pi and GPIO Zero, which is Python, GPIO library, whatever else, that doesn't get the views. That doesn't get the views. What gets the views, apparently? Talking about the PlayStation 5 requiring a new television. But hey, I can say it with a smile. I can say it with a smile. So anywho, some things to ponder, some things to ponder as we as we go into the future. I think with a lot of us, a lot of us, I don't know, maybe uh, lulled into a sense of security with honesty and doing the right thing. And uh, I think with the times that are coming, I really think they're going to be bad. I really honestly think that they're going to be bad. And I think, I think they, I think, I think with what governments are doing, I think, um, I think they're only making it worse. There's, there's only more, pre more and more and more pressure behind the dikes. Basically, that's the thing. It's like they keep, um, so I imagine you have a flood, you have a river that's flooding or something. And basically, basically imagine the government continuously increasing the, 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 the height of the dam, even when everybody knows the dam will fail. So it's like, well, we can keep increasing the, the height of the dam so that today everything doesn't go to hell. 
But as the height of that dam goes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, and higher since we know the dam, we know for a fact that dam will fail, what then ends up happening is then when it does collapse, there is exponentially more damage from it. And that's what I'm looking at. Because again, it's just, and so that's what you got to think about. Again, the, 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 uh, was it the yuppie? Maybe it was the yuppie Nuremberg defense. Maybe it was the yuppie or Nuremberg defense. But yeah, the yuppie Nuremberg defense. Right, you get to a point. You get to a point, and um, you know, you don't. How do you put? It? You don't. You don't sell. You don't sell your most sacred values. Again, I'm not going to lie. This, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to defraud. To be clear, I am not going to be fraudulent. I am not going to lie. And you don't. You don't. You don't sell what is most dear. But you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, maybe you start being a little bit more flexible on the other stuff. Especially then when that's what people want. When that's pe what people want. If people come to you literally essentially asking you for permission to do X, Y, or Z, at what point do you just give them permission? I don't know. <laughs> Something to ponder in this modern world. Something to ponder. So that, I will call it a video. I enjoy doing these fail normal videos again. The fail normal videos, I get to ponder. <laughs> I get to ponder and talk about the things that I actually find interesting. Because honestly, I really don't care about PlayStation 5. <laughs> I remember that I was talking to, a, I did an interview with this guy, Kerry Holzman. And he, he does computer repair. Anyways, I did this interview with him. And he was like, yeah, so tell me, Tell me about the computer, the, your, building, your computer building experience that you remember the most. I remember it was adorable. I was talking to him, we were doing this live interview, and he's like, yeah, yeah, tell me about, tell me about the most memorable time you built a computer. That's just like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> building a computer, um, I slap crap together. <laughs> Uh, there was this one time I bought a really inexpensive case for about $15, and it was basically made out of razor blades. Uh, that was memorable. <laughs> but otherwise, like, don't really care that much. So anyways, this is what I find interesting. But I'm curious how much profit margin is in fail normal. Anyways, that's, that's its own thing. So just think about think about what I said today. Not just for your not for yourself and your own actions, but also think about how people are acting towards you. Just realize a lot of people, a lot of people are not lying to you. They're just not being honest. So be very, very, very careful. And with that, I'll see you folks in the next video.